This is a very poor simplex or repeater contact. That is with Super SDX on. That is amazing. During my ARRL Teachers Institute live stream slash telethon, I gave away a radio, this uh, Yesu FT3185. This is one of three radios that is new to the Yesu lineup of mobile radios. And they all are kind of interesting in their own right, having decent price points for all of them. This one sits right in the middle, being a VHF only radio, which some of you might not be that interested in, but its upside is it's 85 watts, and it features something that I think is going to get a lot more attention from people in the future, this ASP, which is Audio Signal Processor, SPU1 included. This is one of the three radios that has this new audio processor built into it. And I am told that this is one of the best audio processors that you can get, particularly in any mobile radio. It's so good that we might see it in HF radios in the future. That's me speculating now. Uh, again, big shout out to all of you that watched and donated during the ARRL Teachers Institute stream. There are some of you that stayed on from the beginning when we started and all the way through to the end. And Boy, I just want to say a hearty thank you. So let's get this over on the desktop and I'll show you what it's all about. We'll listen to it, but I'm not going to hold on to this very long because this does actually belong to somebody else. So we'll do a power test, of course, and maybe we'll catch some people on the air to test out that ASP. Now, I didn't have much time to play with the radios when I was at Ham Radio Outlet where I picked this one up. Uh, but I will say that... Oh, well, see, I already tore the box. Great. Sorry to the winner of the, uh, of the radio. I will say that they uh, they all sounded pretty good, but we were not really paying that much attention. Now I figured I'd pay much closer attention in front of the camera like I am right now. Uh, instruction book like you'd expect. I, I'm not going to belabor most of this. I think you know what you're about to get in a lot of this stuff. We've got a microphone, which I will be using. And of course we expect a power cable of some kind. Holy smokes, that's a tight box. Yep, there's our power cable. Now there's some cap ends here. Ooh, look at the heat sink on that thing holy smokes that is not a joke man this is definitely an 85 watt radio holy smokes look at that that's beefy yeah take a look at that that's ah, thick i wonder how hot it gets if you just really rag chewing on it it does have what looks like a speaker and that's about it as long as you got the power cable and the coax the head unit is not removable Oh, data. Interesting. Huh. Okay, well, let's... Ooh, boy, okay. Did, didn't expect this. All right, so the data cable is likely for programming, but I'll double-check that, and if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll superimpose the uh, the instructions here. But what I, I don't like this is the mic cable is on the bottom of the radio? So what if you have this set up on a desk or something? It also doesn't have a, a mount? Is that right? Hold on. So it does have a, an angle bracket for a mount, but uh, not that really nice toggled one that locks in place like we have on the FTM 500. And the more expensive version of these mobiles has that, that little bracket system, which uh, I find really, really nice. Well, I guess uh, we're going to have to put something on the top of this. And you can see it says uh, Yesu FT3185 right on top. Uh, the face of this radio is very simple. It's a very easy radio to use. I I was able to get up and running on this thing in like two minutes because literally it's just the short menu for all the common things you do like creating a re repeater uh, connection, saving a memory, and then hold it down for the deep menu. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> that was such a pain. Anything with a huge heat sink like this makes it difficult to get your fingers in. Although at least you can go through like this and kind of pinch it and twist. That seems to be fine. All right, the very important power test. Here we go. Yeah, about 80 watts. And you're probably a little bit off because the antenna is a 1.3. So a little off. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu test. Navigating this radio couldn't be simpler. There's a volume control on the left. There's a squelch control on the left. There's a big VFO on the right. And if you click it, it changes to the upper level. So you can go through your megahertz instead of the kilohertz. Controlling the power here is with the high button. 
Oh, 85 watts. So 85 advertised, but we were at a 1.3 to 1 SWR, so you probably lost 5 watts in that. The Super SDX is what we are really after, and it turns the receive button blue. We're going to test that in a second. Lock button locks the main screen. PMG here. PMG allows you to set different frequencies up to 5 in here, which can be memory channels, simplex channels, whatever you want. And then it'll monitor all five of them back and forth. This is a feature that came out on a couple of Yaesu radios not too long ago. It's quite handy, particularly if you're like an MCOM variety type person that may have more than two channels on an upper, lower, A, B side that you may want to monitor once. PMG will give you five, which is pretty nice. VNM changes you from memory mode to VFO and then MW, hold it down for memory right, hold down it again, and it'll set it to a memory channel that you select. The menu button here goes through a series of uh, simple, m simple settings. So home is one, you may want to set your home frequency. The repeater reverse, the shift plus minus or simplex, squelch type, that's going to be if you're using CTCSS tones, etc. Tone frequency for CTCSS tones. And that's it. That's like setting a repeater. It's just off this menu button. It's real simple. If you hold down menu, though, this will take you into the deeper menu, which is alphabetical. So it starts with automatic power off, so some kind of a, a timer. It has a... I don't know what some of these do. What the heck does AR mod do? Oh, yes. AR mod. It sets the beep option during arts operation, as well as polling interval during arts operation when you are in arts int. And B C L O Beclo is your enable, disable, busy channel lockout feature. And because it's all alphabetical, you're going to get a lot of stuff you don't really care about. You can get to all the settings, including mic gain, through the deep, the deep F menu. But just keep in mind, it's a very straightforward radio. There's not a whole lot you're going to be doing up here. Now, as far as operating the radio, you're going to be using the hand mic a lot. Uh, there are a couple of buttons, like your home button, right on the face of this thing as well as your weather channel button, and you can turn on and start and stop scanning by holding down the upper lower frequencies. You can also turn scanning on from the radio in the deep F menu, but it's a little kludgy. If you go to scan on and hit it, it'll scan up or down depending on what you selected. In my case, I rolled it down on the VFO, so now it's scanning down. That's just how it works. If you want to stop scanning, just push the PTT button. There you go. You can key in a frequency. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu test. Well, this makes it like the first time in months nobody came back to me on a simplex call. I'm very disappointed, particularly because I'm making a video. So in California, you're supposed to be better at uh, simplex than that. Mute button. Let's uh, scan up and see if we can find a repeater so I can show you this amazing functionality of the Super DX. I'm not kidding when I say this is out of control good. KK6 PRC, WD6 CDN. Uh, I know Ned's starting shortly, but how are you doing? Great. I made it to the shack on time. Just got back from traveling back from uh, San Felipe, Mexico. How about yourself? Oh, doing good. Just hanging out, waiting for Net to, to get started so I can go listen. Um, wow, San Felipe, that was, a, that was a heck of a drive. Roger that, about 350, 350. Started at uh, 1 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, wow, that was, that's, that's a long road trip. Still, I uh, hope we had a lot of fun in Mexico. Um, I haven't been down there myself, but I've heard there's lots of neat things to go go down there. And San Felipe has uh, probably got some pretty good beaches. Yeah, we were blessed with very good weather and uh, uh, got to spend Thanksgiving down there. So a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a little bit harder for them to figure out, like, okay, how much colder does it need to get before I, I'm going to get the new point. Gulf Whiskey, Juliet, got you checked in, Rose. And Bill K at 6 SMP got you checked in. Also, we had a Fountain Valley station that was doubling. If you're in Fountain Valley and you're checking in in Orange County check-ins, try again. 
uh, Charlie Oscar uniform, is that correct? Yeah, I'm in touch. So it even takes repeaters that are normally very strong, and it makes the signals so clear. Very impressive. So it's it's not just creating a digital underwater sound. Again, listen listen when I turn it on for like an underwater sound. If you're checking in Orange County, give it another shot. That was an echo link station, that last one. That's amazing. Okay, Delta 6, Charlie Delta November, uh, Michael Huntington Beach, and I'll be on the side, please. Now, just for fun, if you're using the hand mic and you hit the lower button here. Thursday night, mostly clear. Lows around 50. This is your weather stations. Highs are in 70 to around 80. The forecast for the western San Fernando Valley tonight, mostly clear. Lows in the mid 30s to mid 40s, except the lower to mid 50s in the hills. Wednesday, winds. Wednesday night, mostly clear. Lows around 40. Light winds. Now for the official National Weather Service forecast for San Gorgonio Pass near Banning tonight. Partly cloudy until midnight, becoming mostly clear. Lows in the mid 50s. Light winds. Wednesday, mostly sunny. Highs in the upper 70s. Hey, appreciate that. All the way into Cyprus. Thank you for the uh, the check there. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu 73. All right, so this radio is a little unique from my point of view. It's like $300 retail, $275 on sale at HRO, and its younger brother, the 3165, is on sale for $250, normally $275. But then the biggest brother is the 150 RASP, the FTM 150 RASP, which is uh, 379 normally $420 on sale. And, th and that's going to be the one that is most reminiscent of like a, an 8900, a dual bander with full duplex control, meaning you can do satellites with it. That's likely the radio you should go with. This is going to be for those that must have 85 watts and must have something simple because I don't know of anything else. If you want more complicated and more power, you get an amplifier or you would get an ICOM 9700, which does a boatload of other things. It's also, you know, eight times the price or whatever. Did I do that right? Yeah, about eight times the price. So don't know exactly uh, who this is for, but it hits all the marks of what it claims to be an 85 watt two meter only radio. Unfortunately, this doesn't have a data port on it. If it had a data port on it, this would be good for APRS and packet radio stations, but it's not for that. In, in fact, I don't, I don't think it was designed for anything other than being an FM radio. The downside, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but the downside to me is this cable that comes out of the bottom. That is a problem. I, I much would have preferred it to be on the side or somewhere else, anywhere else than the bottom. I, I don't get that, but maybe you in the video comments can tell me why it would come out of the bottom instead of like on the left side or the right side. Anyway, those are my thoughts. There you go. I think the RASP technology, if it's the same across the, the board with all of these, that is some amazing audio processing that they're doing. It is, it makes this radio line. I think that that 150 RASP is going to be a very, very popular radio, although at $419, Kind of expensive. This is kind of also expensive, too. A little more than I expect, but I don't know. I'll leave you up to decide that. So what do you think of that ASP system? What a great ASP it is. Uh, I, I'm actually a big fan of the audio quality coming out of that really, 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 really good sounding radio. And even though most of the time I don't need a ton of that for VHF, UHF, there's nothing wrong with having it on board, particularly if you're in an environment with a lot of noise, that might, that might help you out a ton. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'd love it if you left your comments. Tell me what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you could. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ73.